Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Northwest Baseball Report. I am your host, Josh, and this is the recap show for April 8th through the 11th. Lots of baseball being played this weekend. It was actually a pretty nice weekend. There was a little bit of rain here and there, but overall, it was a pretty nice weekend for, for baseball all across the Northwest. Before we jump into the recap, guys, I do want to say, hey, if you are out there and you are interested in and being a part of Northwest Baseball Report, please let me know. I need some people who are willing to help write little recaps on the different conferences and matchups that happen. Um, right now, I'm doing three different recaps. I've got two for the NWAC and one for the rest of the conferences. And I honestly would like to do more detailed reviews and recaps of games and matchups because, you know, I want to highlight the players and the teams and really give them the coverage that they deserve. And so if you're out there and you're, you're interested, let me know. I am very thankful at this point. I've got a few of the NWAC schools that are sending me stuff um, like Mount Hood. If you look at the uh, recap for the North and South on the, the late, latest one, uh, there's a nice little write-up from Mount Hood that actually came from one of the coaches. I'm getting stuff from Spokane and a few others. So it's nice to get that. It really is helpful. So if you're a coach listening to this, Please, if you send stuff to the local paper, include my email in there and just, just send it to me as well. It'd make things uh, a lot easier. It does help me go through and, and figure things out and do that type of stuff. So, yeah, just anything, anyone who wants to join in and help out, be a part of this, let me know. There's always ways to do it. If you don't know how to write an article or recap, let me know. It's not that hard. It, just a few little things. I can actually give you a template to, to work with as well. But you know, that's what it is. In the meantime, I'm enjoying this, doing it myself. I'm actually recording this Monday, and in about 45 minutes, I'll be going down to cover some high school baseball. On Wednesday, I'm actually going to cover some local fast pitch. Uh, my niece is actually playing, so I'll be covering that. And then next weekend, I'll be covering uh, a few games as well, assuming everything works out. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on, and I'm enjoying it. But guys, let's jump into this recap, but I'm excited once again. It was a great weekend for baseball. We're going to start it off with a great Northwest Athletic Conference. And the first matchup was Northwest Nazarene versus Western Oregon. And Western Oregon would come in on Friday and they would sweep the doubleheader. They would go in there, take care of business. Uh, but Saturday would be a brand new day and Northwest Nazarene would rebound. And they would sweep Saturday's doubleheader. So uh, a 2-2 split over the weekend. Uh Probably not what Northwest Nazarene was hoping for, but Western Oregon going in and, and taking care of business, that's a big win for them. Uh, Josh Berman from Wu actually had a great weekend at five hits, uh, two of which were home runs. Grant Carey for Northwest Nazarene had seven hits and drove in five RBIs. The other matchup in the GNAC is St. Martin's and Central Washington, and Central Washington would, would win this series three to one. They would take care of business. They would actually explode for 30 runs in the first game on Sunday, putting in a, a lot of guys across the plate. Uh, so I'm sure that was an interesting one to watch. Uh, Zach Berryman would collect five hits. He'd score five runs, drive in five runs. Uh, Justin Hampson would have six hits, four runs, and, and uh, drive in three RBIs in a single game. So great outings for those two guys in just a single game. Uh, it's unbelievable, especially when you're thinking – those guys are the leadoff hitter and number two hitter in the lineup. So a uh, lot of big runs there coming out. So right now, guys, in the GNAC, the current standings have Northwest Nazarene at 13-3 and in the conference. They're in first place. Western Oregon, not far behind at 11-5. and uh, Splitting with Northwest Nazarene actually kept them in the hunt. Uh, for everything. Central Washington is 9-7, and seven, so they're actually right there with them. Montana State Billings is 5-11 and 11 in conference, and St. Martin's rounds it out at 2-14 and 14 in the conference. Now we're going to jump over to the Northwest Conference, guys, where the first matchup was Pacific Lutheran versus Puget Sound. A little bit of a rivalry matchup that did not end up being much of a rivalry. Uh, Pacific Lutheran would go out there, and they would sweep Puget Sound, and you know, they just had their way with it. The Lutes would, would be led by Jordan Haworth, who has collected nine hits, scored seven runs. You know, it's just, uh, it was all loots, and that puts them at 10 and five in conference. So uh, they are doing pretty good right now. They're sitting in second place. Another matchup on the weekend for the NWC uh, George Fox versus Lewis and Clark. 
And this would actually end up going towards George Fox in a pretty good low matchup here. Uh, George Fox would win three out of the four games. Uh, Mark Audette would, was just tearing the cover off the ball. He had five home runs over the weekend. Um, he actually hit a home run in every game and one of the games he hit two. So uh, that's quite a weekend for, for him. He ended up finishing with nine hits, scoring eight runs, and having 12 RBIs. Uh, next up in the NWC, we have Willamette versus Whitworth. And Willamette would take care of business. They would go 4-0 on the weekend, on the road. And they would just help their cause as they kind of move up in the rankings right now. They're currently sitting in third place at 13-7. and seven, And they are within striking distance of both first and second place with the way they're playing right now. Uh, they'd be led by Jeff Hoffman, who had four home runs, and Samuel Daly, who had three home runs. So good offensive output once again for those guys. They've been doing pretty good all season long. You tend to see those names uh, pop up over and over again. Last matchup in the Northwest Conference is Pacific versus Whitman, which was actually, I thought would be a really good matchup. And I think it was, but at the same time, in the end, Pacific would come out three wins to one, and they would kind of solidify their spot right now in the lead uh, up for the conference. They're 15 and five. So they are in the driver's seat. They're the one who holds uh, their own destiny really at this point. Some great pitching came from Pacific. Uh, a lot of their starters came in, took care of business, uh, really only gave up a couple runs here and there. So big shout out to their pitching staff who came out and, and did what they needed to do uh, in order to compete this weekend and hold their spot as number one in the conference. So once again, guys, for the NWC, Pacific is in first, Pacific Lutheran is in second, Willamette, followed by Whitman, George Fox, Lewis and Clark. Whitworth, Puget Sound, and rounding out the, the whole lineup is Linfield at 3-11. and 11. So, guys, let's jump to the Cascade Collegiate Conference where, first of all, Corbin took on LC State, and LC State just scored like crazy. Um, they ended up getting the sweep. They've already solidified themselves as a first-place team in the CCC, and this was just the icing on the cake for them. Um Brock Ethan would actually just be huge for LC State. He'd get 10 hits, score 10 runs, and drive in 11 RBIs on the weekend. That is some big numbers for a four-game series. Uh, also from the CCC, we have College of Idaho versus Eastern Oregon. And here, College of Idaho would take the series. They'd win 3-1. to one. Eastern Oregon, for being a first-year program, you know, they've had their struggles, but they've also had – um, some positive things happening. They're winning games. They're taking on teams, being competitive. So honestly, I look for Eastern Oregon to be you know, a little more competitive each year as they begin, begin to get more guys in and really kind of build that system. Uh, but for College of Idaho, uh, this was a big win for them. It moves them up and ties them for uh, second in the conference. And Austin Van Horn was really a key player for them this, this weekend. 12 total hits. Scored seven runs, also knocked in seven RBIs. So uh, that rounds out the CCC. And once again, LC State, they're 23-1 and one in conference. I believe they're ranked number five in the nation. Uh, College of Idaho and Corbin at 10-14 and 14 in conference. Oregon Tech, 9-11. Eastern Oregon, 4-16. and 16. Now, guys, let's jump into the NWAC where there was a ton of stuff happening this weekend. We'll start with the South region where Mount Hood took on Chemeketa. And the big story of this one is... A no-hitter from Mount Hood against Chemeketa. Uh, Jacob Biesterfeld would actually go out and strike out 10 people. He'd get a complete game. No-hitter is actually a seven-inning game uh, because of the 10-run rule. Uh, so great outing from him. He's been he's been very solid this year. Going to be probably, uh, probably one of the top pitchers in the NWAC overall when it comes to awards at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, constantly seeing his name. But overall, Mount Hood played well. They had a lot of offensive uh, going on. They actually won the first couple of games, 14-1 and 21-7. So uh, definitely putting up um, some offensive numbers with their guys. They're pretty deep right now, it seems like, with their, uh, with their hitting, uh, just with the numbers they're putting up. Next matchup in the, in the South region, Len Benton versus Umqua. And this was actually one I was kind of excited about. Umqua's played well. Len Benton has been... Uh, playing extremely well. Uh, but in this one, in the end, Len Benton would win three games to one, take the series. And uh, Eric Hill and Taylor Ott 
uh, would both have solid starts for Len Benton on the weekend. Hill would go five innings, only allowing one run to get his win, and Ott would go seven innings, striking out nine and walking none. Uh, he did allow two runs, but you know, that's a pretty good outing when you strike out nine and don't walk anybody. So a uh, big weekend for Len Benton. They looked pretty strong. And next weekend, I believe they actually will face off against Mount Hood, and that is going to be one of the, the matchups I'm going to preview uh, later on this week because that is going to be a fun one to watch and to kind of see how things play out. Last matchup in the South, Southwestern Oregon versus Lane. And in this one, Lane would take care of business. They'd win three out of the four games. Uh, Henry Prager, Mason Krausen, Trenton Hugh, and Trey Werner would combine to throw a shutout and only allow three hits uh, for the Titans in one of the games. So uh, they've been playing pretty well at this point. They're back up to 500. The Titans are. And uh, they're going to be a competitive team moving forward for the rest of the year. For the North region now, we got Edmonds versus Olympic. And it was all Edmonds. Edmonds sweeps Olympic in the four-game set. Um, they, their pitching is just strong. They've always been strong. Edmonds is a team that, um, even though they don't always have the strongest offense, their, their pitching is always up there, always competitive. And this just continues to show it. Uh, Josh Latimer, Caden Lewis, and Aiden Heitman will combine for a shutout with 11 total Ks for the for those guys. So great pitching from Edmonds. They're going to be competitive. If they can score some runs, they're going to be a team to uh, team to be reckoned with. And speaking of teams to be reckoned with, Bellevue and Everett take took on each other this weekend, and it was a slugfest back and forth. These two teams really are probably probably the top two teams in the North as of this moment, and. Uh, they would kind of show with the way they were playing. They actually would end up splitting the series, uh, both of them taking two games. Zach Boswell would have an outstanding outing for Everett. He'd go six innings, only allow one hit. Um, Austin McMines would help lead Bellevue uh, offensively with seven hits, scoring four times from the leadoff spot. So a lot of talent from those two teams up there. The North region really is uh, a deep region and a fun region to, to watch and to follow. You guys, let's move on to one of the other regions. Let's move on to the East region where Walla Walla took on Treasure Valley. And even though Walla Walla would get one on uh, the first day, Treasure Valley would end up taking the series three games to one. Um, and actually, it was pretty impressive offensively. They would put up 42 total runs over the four games uh, Treasure Valley would. So offensively, they were on fire. Um, guys were getting hits and, and scoring runs. And that's what you got to do to to win, especially in the East, where you know, there's some teams out there that can, they can hit. Next matchup in the East region, Spokane versus Blue Mountain. And Spokane, once again, taking care of business. They are just they're just on fire this season. I think they've only lost one game at this point. Uh, McCabe, Cottrell, Cameron Liss, once again, both guys out there on the mound doing their work. Both went six innings in their starts, uh, not allowing any earned runs. Both struck out 10 guys, so... Um, that, that right there is what makes Spokane dangerous. It's the fact that uh, their pitching staff, especially their top two guys, are very strong. They're very solid out there. Uh, next matchup, Columbia Basin versus Wenatchee Valley. And in, in this one, it, it would be an interesting start off the bat because I, I would say, from what I know, that both teams are, are somewhat equal. But in this one, Columbia Basin came out winning three out of the four games. Um, they'd get three strong outings from their starters. Kirby Robertson would go six innings, not allowing a run. Jace Wessel would go six and a third, uh, not allowing an earned run. And Landon Webb would go six innings, only allowing one earned run. So three great starts from Columbia Basin, really kind of impacting the outcome of that series. Last matchup in the East region was actually one that I got to go and watch the first half of the series. I got to watch the doubleheader in Yakima. Uh, Yakima would go on to win three games to one. And I'll be honest, guys. Yakima is a very deep, very spread out team. Offensively, every guy one through nine can hit. Uh, pitching is not the most dominant uh, that I've seen from them, but they're solid. Uh, Big Ben, on the other hand, same way. Their pitching can get keep their team in it. The biggest thing with Big Ben is they just needed to come up with the big hits and the big plays, and they just weren't able to do it uh, while I was there. But it looks like they were able to come out and win a game uh, in this series, and that's good for them, and it's a good chance to uh, – really kind of see how the East competes. And it was fun for me to be able to see for the first time an uh, East field. That's actually the first time I've been able to travel that side during the season and actually watch a game. 
But guys, let's jump into the West region and, and finish this out. Now, first of all, we're all the rest of the um, regions. We're doing a four game series. The West is actually doing two game series uh, on Saturdays and a different matchup on Sunday. I'm not sure if that changes later on. I just know that's what it is at the moment. Uh, so the first matchup in the West was Tacoma versus Green River. And this was all Tacoma all the way through. In the first, in those two games, Tacoma would score 39 runs compared to Green River's one run. Uh, offensively, Hunter Jenkins uh, in one of the games would go two for four with three walks and he'd score three runs. Uh, but Tacoma wasn't just all offense. They actually had some great outings on the mound as well. Uh, Kyle Dunning, Jacob Salander, Sam Lauderdale, and Le Levi Cucci uh, would combine for 18 Ks, three, only three walks, and only one earned run uh, in the two-game sweep. Lower Columbia would also travel up to Centralia for a matchup up there. I don't really have any stats from that one. Uh, last I checked it, there wasn't anything posted. Um, but Lower Columbia went there, took care of business. Uh, games were actually pretty close, it looked like. Um, so I'm interested to see how things went and just kind of really uh, what happened in that matchup. Another matchup that happened in the West on Saturday, Pierce versus Grays Harbor. And this would end up being a split. Uh, Grays Harbor is coming out, and they're playing tough. In fact, we'll talk about that uh, in just a little bit. Pierce coming out. Uh, they're also playing well, having not really had a chance to practice a whole lot uh, this, this year and not at all during the fall as compared to a few other teams. So uh, it's good to see them out playing, good to see them being competitive. Like I said, Pierce and Grays Harbor, uh, both split the series, and they're going to be teams that we're going to are going to disrupt the West a little bit, I think. Uh, moving on to the Sunday matchup, Centralia versus Green River, and this was all Centralia once again. Uh, starting pitchers for Centralia would, would do well. Matthew Opst would get go five innings, two hits, no earned runs. Uh, Noah Briarton would actually come in in relief and go five innings, only allow three hits and an earned run in the sweep um, of Centralia over Green River. Another matchup, Lower Columbia versus Pierce, and this would be a, a, a split as well uh, where Pierce would be able to take one of the games um, and actually a shutout against Lower Columbia. Um, Riley Polino would pitch a complete game, seven innings, only give up three hits in the shutout for the win. On Pierce's side, uh, for, for LCC, Drew Steelhammer would go three for five, scoring three runs in LCC's victory in, on the day. Last matchup of the weekend, Tacoma versus Grays Harbor. And I said earlier that Grays Harbor would be a tough uh, team all year long. They actually split with Tacoma, and they are showing that they're able to beat anyone they're going up against. And this is going to make them a highly competitive team. I think Tacoma is an extremely talented team. So for Grays Harbor to go out there and to get a win in a doubleheader and, and really show that they're up there with those teams, it's, it's impressive. It, it just makes the West even deeper than it has been the last few years, and I'm excited for that. Um, so a lot of stuff going on up there. Tyler Garcia for Tacoma uh, would go seven innings, but he would actually get the loss in a 2-1 game. He'd give up two earned runs. Uh, the winning pitcher for Grays Harbor was uh, Seti Manes, and he would go six innings, only allowing two hits and one earned run. So a lot of games this weekend, guys. Like I said, we had stuff going all over the place. At some point, we have to figure out how I'm going to break this down even. I uh, had to break down the NWAC because there are so many games going on for the recaps. Probably try and figure something out for the podcast as well just so we can get uh, more guys highlighted throughout the podcast. But, guys, with that, thank you so much for listening. You know, this really is for all you who are too lazy to read, which I'm included in that. So this is for you guys to sit and listen, maybe on a drive into work or something like that, just so you guys know what happened in the Northwest. So, guys, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, catch some baseball and enjoy the nice weather.